Hi, this is Angel Pacheco. I'm the program administrator at Lighthouse Guild. I've been with the agency for 34 years. I'm in charge of the assistive technology department and the adaptive living program. Today, I'm going to introduce you to several applications uh, for the visually impaired and totally blind. I'm going to start off with VoiceOver. VoiceOver is available on all Apple systems. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and my sound so that way um, you can see and hear what's happening uh, with these applications. Okay, let's get started. Okay, we're going to start off with VoiceOver. And VoiceOver is a screen reading application that's built into the iOS of all Apple uh, devices. Uh, there's a few ways to get to them and the first way is by going to settings. Scroll down until you get to accessibility. Once you're in accessibility, um, you have several options available to you. Uh, VoiceOver is the one with speech. Zoom is magnification. Uh, and the list goes on and on. Uh, if you scroll all the way to the bottom, you'll see that there's an accessibility shortcut. Uh, you can select which accessibility features you want uh, on a certain menu. And I'll show you how to get to that menu in a moment. So as you can see, I do have several items checked off. Uh, that means that they will appear on my uh, accessibility list when uh, I open it up. I am going to close out of accessibility and settings. And what I'm going to do is I have a ten, uh, um, an iPhone 10. Um, it has no home button, but if you did have a home button and you had accessibility uh, set up, you can triple click your home button and you will have a menu that will pop up at the bottom of the screen. What I need to do here is triple click on the button to the right of my phone. And that brings up the accessibility shortcut menu. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and select voiceover. Voiceover on. And voiceover is on. I'm just going to increase the volume here. So as, you, as I increase the volume, you do hear those little taps letting you know that something is happening and the tap gets louder when you increase the volume. I'm going to go ahead and use hand gestures. 6.22 p.m. I'm, I'm going to swipe to my right. Calendar, Tuesday, September 22nd. Settings. Double tap to open. Accessibility folder. So 13 I'm at the apps. folder that I want to open. Double tap and hold to perform move by hold and drag. Actions available. So as you can hear, VoiceOver can give you a lot of directions on what to do. So I'm going to double tap to open up. Accessibility Opening folder. accessibility folder. Accessibility folder. 13 apps. I'm going to tap, tap, tap C. Right. Double tap, tap and tap hold C. to perform move by hold and drag. Actions available. So I'm going to double tap to open up the application. Again, you can double tap anywhere on the screen. Tap, tap, see, tap, tap, see, repeat. Tap the right side of the screen to take a photo or the left side to take a video. So here's my living room and I'm going to move the camera to the right to aim it at the um, TV there. And I'm going to go ahead and tap on the screen. Here. Camera button. Button. to select the camera feature. Double tap and to take a photo of what's in front of you. I'm going to double tap. Camera button. Picture one in progress. Picture one is black flat screen TV on brown wooden TV rack. And it basically goes ahead and describes what's in front of you. So there is a black TV in front of me uh, and a wooden um, TV uh, stand there. Um, you can take pictures of all of your surrounding and it'll give you some feedback as to what's there. Uh, it's not 100% accurate. Um, I do have a fish tank there and if I were to take a picture of it, let's see what happens. Camera button, button, camera button. Picture two in progress. Picture two is black flat screen TV turned on on brown wooden TV rack. Okay, so it also identifies my uh, large aquarium as a TV. So again, that shows that it's not 100% accurate. Um, but if you know you, your surroundings, you know more or less where certain items are. Uh, if you're out in the street, you can take a picture of something and you know, you'll know that there shouldn't be a TV where a car should be and so on. Okay, uh, I'm going to turn off voiceover for now. Alert. Accessibility shortcuts selected. 
Voice over, voice over off. I'm going to close tap tap C. And I'm going to move on to the next app, which is the iNote. The iNote was designed by the Department of Engraving. Um, it allows individuals to scan uh, their bills to determine if it's a one, five, ten, basically the uh, denomination of each. So I'm going to scan a few bills here. Ten dollars front. So let me know that it was ten dollars front. Five dollars back. Five dollars back. One dollar front. One dollar front. I held each bill differently so that way you can see that it uh, doesn't matter how you hold the bill in front of it, it will still identify it. We can identify both front and back. Ten dollars back. And that's what that app does. It's a very simple application. Um, it works well. Uh, so if you're in a store or anywhere you have to give someone change or so if someone gives you change, you can identify the denomination of each bill before you leave. I'm going to close iNote now. I'm going to move to Seeing AI. Seeing AI was developed Short by Microsoft. Having to love the C family. Having zero this A. This is uh, basically an all-in-one application. It has having is a having to love is a family. Having, having zero is a. And it's actually picking up the text that I have on the wall. So I'm going to move my family memories to the right, and it's still picking up the text that's on one of my frames. Um, short text is basically that you put something in front of it. And reward. Bad dog wisdom tumblers. You is fetching catcher fiddles follies. Each bad dog if you're teaching each life lessons. Made in the U.S. Bubble. Uh, dog so designs online. Family happy. Once you remove it, it'll. Uh, family mem family ha Once family memories. Family memories. Smiles a happy. Family memories. Ah, family, 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 family. I smile. Happy family memories. Picture frame there, so I'm going to move over to document. document. Top and right edges document not visible. Is basically, that if you have a top document, and right edge is not visible. Right in front of the hold camera. steady processing. It told me to hold it still. Took a picture of it, and the information pops up on the screen. At the bottom, you do have the play pause button on the lower left hand corner. On the lower right hand corner, you have the increase and decrease uh, font size. And you can also send this information um, via text uh, to Facebook, to WhatsApp, to and almost any application that you have available. What I'm going to do now is hit the play button. Body, font family, Arial, font size, 12 points. Bad dog at these fetching glasses defiantly disobeys corn linens. Set of four, exclusive to. I'm going to pause it as you heard, uh, told me what font size, uh, basically everything about the font. Uh, then it started reading back and it started highlighting the uh, words and numbers that uh, it was reading back, which is fantastic. Um, I'm going to hit the back button, which is located in the upper left hand corner. Top and right edges not the top and right edges not product. Select here is the product icon. The product icon is fantastic. When you go to the supermarket um, and you're trying to uh, figure out uh, if that's a can of spaghetti or vegetables or something, uh, sometimes it's very difficult. On the shelves of small stores, um, you'll notice that the label is sticking towards uh, the customer. Uh, so when you grab a can or bottle or anything, almost anything from the shelf, um, just Go ahead and grab it from the front and then begin to turn it slowly in front of the camera until the processing a whole mixed processing vegetables. Off. Now it says a hold mixed vegetables. A hold is the company that um, produces this can of vegetables. Uh, if you needed to know what type of vegetables were available in there, in the lower, lower right hand corner, you'll see an icon or a button that says. Um, more info so i'm going to go ahead and tap on that when i tap on it it takes me to the more information section and at uh at the bottom you do have the play pause 
uh, increase, decrease font size, and again, the ability to send this information uh, to someone else. Um, I'm going to hit the play and it's going to read back the information of that can. A whole mixed vegetables, a whole mixed vegetables, carrots, potatoes, peas, corn, green beans, celery, lima beans, amount and percent daily value per serving. Okay, I'm going to pause it there. As you can uh, hear and probably see on, on the screen, uh, it does uh, give you all the information on that can, including how many ounces um, and then, uh, sometimes they do give you directions on how to prepare the item. I'm going to go, uh, back, uh, by pressing the back arrow on the upper left-hand corner. We still have the image there. I'm going to hit the back arrow again. Um, one other item that, uh, um, you need to scan are, is usually cereal. Uh, cereal has the barcode located somewhere else. Uh, with cereals, uh, usually it's on the shelf, um, like this. Uh, it, once you grab the box, processing not recognized. It's not recognizing because there's no code there, uh, so I have to hit back. But if you flip it over to the bottom, processing general milk, honey nut Cheerios, gluten free breakfast available. cereal, family size 19.5 ounces. Box. So, again, here it is, uh, General Mills, uh, the maker. Uh, along with a brief description. If you wanted more information, uh, you will click on the more information button on the lower right hand corner. I'm going to click on the back button. And now we're going to select the fourth item here, which is the person. Person. The person uh, feature here uh, will identify individuals that are in a room. Uh, if you've already taken a picture of that individual and you've labeled it, it will actually tell you that that person is in the room by name and how far they are. If you don't have that individual labeled, it'll let you know that there is a person in front of you and how far they are from you. What I'm going to do is have my assistant here um, walk in front of the camera and stop. <clears throat> One face near top left, Angela near top edge, eight feet away. So that is my daughter. She walked in front of the camera um, and I, it identified her. It said Angela and also the distance that she is away from me. So I'm going to have her walk off camera. Zero faces. And if there's no one in the room, that's what you'll hear, zero faces. Uh, if there are multiple people in the room, it'll let you know how far each individual is. I'm going to move on to the next feature, which is currency. Currency. Currency here is a little different, and I'm going to move my camera to the right a little. If you notice on my TV, the light is on. Um, with the uh, iNote, uh, the iNote did not have the camera on. Having the camera on is a huge benefit, especially if you're looking into a purse and you need to identify your money inside a purse or a bag. Um, so long as you have a, a, an earpiece in your ear so no one else can hear uh, how much money you have in your pocket, you can go ahead and scan your money fairly quickly. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and scan some money here. One US dollar. So it says one US dollar. Um, you, it didn't say front or back uh, like the um, uh, I know. Um, so that's one of the differences there. Uh, the Seeing AI app um, can actually scan money pretty fast. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, if I'm getting change from a cashier, I can quickly scan my money. One US dollar, five US dollars, 10 US dollars. So it's, it's pretty fast. Um, so you can get your money, get your change, check it, and then just walk away knowing that you received the correct change. The next item on here scene, feature, preview is scene. If you take a picture of what's in front of you. Processing. A flat screen TV sitting in a living room. It goes ahead and identifies the item uh, that's in front of us. Uh, here it said a flat screen TV in a living room, uh, whereas the tap tap C let us know that the screen was on a TV stand. Um, how this application thinks it's it's in a living room. I mean, it is, but uh, we can have TVs basically anywhere nowadays. So again, each feature um, describes things differently. 
I'm going to go ahead and press the back arrow to go back. I'm going to go to the next feature here, which is color. Before I switch over to color, um, any color identification device really isn't that great. Uh, it all depends on uh, lighting. Uh, for example, my walls are actually light blue. Um, they may look white on the screen or light gray. Um, so again, the, the color identifier may pick it up as something else besides blue. Um, uh, if you're wearing navy blue pants, it may pick it up as black, depending on the lighting in the room. So uh, you have to be very careful when you use the color feature. Color, preview, brown. It said brown, so it's probably picking up my TV stand. I'm going to move it up a little bit. Black, Black and brown. brown. Gray. gray. It says gray. Um, it's actually blue. Gray, gray and black. black. Brown. brown. And it said gray and black before because it was picking up both my wall and the TV, then brown for the TV stand. So again, uh, just be careful when you use uh, the color identifier. Handwriting. Handwriting on preview. Here, as long as uh, you're not trying to read back a doctor's prescription or something, the handwriting feature will read back uh, handwritten uh, documents. Light. Light. Light is fantastic. Uh, fantastic feature on here uh, for someone that's totally blind. They may not know whether the light is on or off. They don't want to get up from the chair. to the next application, which is Be My Eyes. Be My Eyes is a volunteer application. Uh, as you can see on the screen, there's 14.2 million uh, volunteers and 248,000 blind individuals using this application. Um, how does it work? Simple, you sign up. Uh, after you sign up, if you, you're the visually impaired or totally blind individual, you would go ahead and um, connect whenever you need assistance. Um, the information goes out to five to 10 individuals, uh, volunteers. Uh, the first one to pick up is the one that gets the call and then they'll go ahead and ask you what they can help you with. Um, so if you need help identifying the date on, um, on the milk to see if it expired, they can do that. Uh, the colors of an item, um, if, uh, there's something in, in the room that you're searching for, you dropped your keys and you can't find them, then they can help you with that and they can tell you how to move your camera. Um, just be aware that these are just volunteers. You may not know any of these individuals, so never give out personal information. That's very important. Never hand out personal information to these individuals. Don't have them help you fill out important forms where it's, just, you know, you're giving your name, your address, your telephone number, date of birth, social security. Do not do that. That's very dangerous. Again, all these individuals are volunteers. They're not certified in any way, shape, or form. Okay. I'm going to close, be my eyes out. Okay. And the next item I'm going to show is 
a smart speaker. I have the Alexa right here. So here's Alexa right now. I have her muted so that way she doesn't turn on. And there's a lot of things that Alexa can do to make someone independent. I'm going to go ahead and turn her, turn, unmute her, um, and I'm going to begin. Alexa, what time is it? It's 6.40 p.m. Hope you've enjoyed your Tuesday. Alexa, what's the temperature outside? Right now, it's 69 degrees Fahrenheit. Tonight, expect a low of 48 degrees. Alexa, how did the Giants do? The Giants are third in the NFC East at 0 and 2. Alexa, remind me to take my blood pressure medication at 9 a.m. every day. Okay, I'll remind you every day at 9 a.m. Alexa, remind me to take my aspirin at 9 p.m. every day. Okay, I'll remind you every day at 9 p.m. So every day I'll receive a notification at 9 a.m. for my blood pressure and 9 p.m. for uh, my other medications. Um, not only does it go off here, but if you have it set up to your phone, you also get a text letting you know it's time to take your medication. So it's a great device for individuals that tend to forget uh, to take their medications. Um, if you also have items in the house that um, can work remotely, uh, Alexa can also control that. For example, Alexa, turn the living room light off. Okay. Alexa, turn the room light on. Okay. Okay, just muted her. Um, so that's just a few of the things that uh, she can do. She can also change my thermostat. Um, I can ask her to raise it, lower it. Um, you can set locks, um, many other uh, features throughout the home. Uh, so again, Alexa is a very um, awesome device. Uh, you, you can also set it as uh, an emergency feature. So if uh, you fall down, um, you injure yourself, uh, you're not feeling well, you can always tell Alexa to call your emergency contact and it can do that as well. Okay, um, and that's it. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed this demonstration. And if you have any questions, you can always reach out to me. Um, my telephone number is 212-769-7850. Take care.